Hi, my name is Vanessa Chisakola and I am a feminist leader from Zambia. I am an artist, I'm an activist, I'm a woman, a mother, and so many hats that I wear on a daily basis. Um, my professional life and my personal life at one point got so interlinked and I think that has contributed to how I got here because I work in an environment which pushes my creativity and so it rarely feels like work. I am a country coordinator for a social movement called Words Much Poetry. It is a creative free expression space where we push for advocacy and human rights. And all the young people that we work with are people that we get into a mood and into a space to speak truth to power. So we aim to create spaces for all sorts of marginalized communities, uh, LGBTQI, uh, women, human right, women human rights defenders, and feminist activists. Um, I got here to this point with a lot of mistakes. It took a lot of trials and errors. It took a lot of moments when I didn't know where I was going and I just had to believe in the process. And it took a lot of learning, a lot of team teamwork, because I cannot say that I've done it all alone. There have been people that really have been there from the beginning of time. Some are not with me now, some are with me today, and some I owe most of the things that I've achieved to, but I cannot forget one person that has been with me throughout this entire journey. I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> um, for me, the whole feminist uh, leadership actually started brewing up in me even before I could define what it is. It always rang at the back of my head. And so where what I can say are like two most important experiences that really led me to that point when I, I, I put my foot down and I was like, okay, this is where I'm going, was when I started writing my poetry because most of my first pieces depict uh, how I voice out in the harsh treatments that women receive from society. And I can refer to a piece called My Place, um, Her Place rather. Her Place was in a forward room called Kitchen. In this kitchen, she was just a chef, a master of recipes, a knowledgeable spice expert, a doctor of greasy areas, a floor scrubber, it was a full-time job. She could barely stay sober. Her opinions landed on kitchen counters. Her creativity only to determine the amount of salt and spice. And her performances was only for the pots and pans. And the shallow-minded man went ahead and called the kitchen her place. They said, her specialty is cookery. Who said documentation leaves in the same room? But you see, her place was not at home. Battling cramps and nursing period flows or wiping blood off flows. Neither was her place at home. Practicing selective hearing or being the chief in administering first aid or passing a band-aid to who needed it first, it was always a crusade. When I wrote that, I, I was in, in my element. I was, I, was, I was at the zenith of my feminism and so... I realized that this is how I want to speak and this is how I want to see things go. And so that was one point. And another turning point is when I did my mileage fellowship at the Moroni Institute in Ghana. Those weeks in, 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 uh, in that place really changed my life because I got to sit in a room full of girls who were ready to get what they wanted and who were ready to support other girls from the different countries in Africa that we were coming from. It made me realize that I was not alone. And in all our tiny efforts from every place that we were coming from, we were like different body parts to a huge body. And the goal 
is for us to be feminist leaders to see the African continent go to another level in its leadership style. And so I realized that, okay, apart from me and every ally that I have, there are these women who are actually thinking like me. And so it makes everything easier to, to pursue. So those are my two serious turning points. And since then, I have never looked back. I look at feminist leadership as the ability to be brave and fearless in your journey, to own it. Um, to have, it's supposed to be a superpower to shape shift and run the world. Um, it means creating a seat at the table for you, for every person around you it's a lot of baton passing because all the knowledge that we're acquiring right now is going to be needed to remind um, a young girl behind you what the world is and what it can be. I look at it as a very gender transformative type of leadership where it's not a, the battle of the sexes. It's about... Um, gender or social norms that are harmful to society and we are coexisting so we have to create a world where even um, men feel a part of and um, it, it is also a lot of telling your own story owning your narrative telling your story the way you want it to sound because most of the times women get suppressed and we are we we are represented under certain titles which do not really tell the whole story of who we are so when i look at feminist leadership is creating spaces the spaces which uh, allow us to tell our story the way we want to tell it and it's also a lot of trailblazing to not be afraid to be the first person to go certain paths that other people are shying away from so it takes, it takes a lot to just be bold and be out there and stand out. If you're out there and you're a young woman, you want to uh, practice uh, feminist leadership, my words to you today are that the world needs you. The world needs you as much as you need yourself. And there are tons of oppressive uh, patriarchal systems that can be broken if all of us had to speak out, had to act on, on, uh, in, in certain ways. And so there can never be enough feminist leaders. Every day we need a new person to join the movement and just declare that this is the leadership style because it ensures more sustainability, there's more equality, and of course we're guaranteed more solutions, which of course put into consideration inclusion for those marginalized communities that we're trying to get it. I'm all about light getting at the end of a room, so there can never be enough feminist leaders, I repeat. And this is not an ideology, it is a lifestyle. So this is a type of leadership which you need to embrace. You need to uh, practice, work with, and it should be you. And it is dependent on you to actually reach out to, to, the, to the next person. So each one should teach one, should nurture one, should mentor one. Each one should take one uh, on their shoulders. And one big lesson that I would like to pass on to anyone listening is that you need a tribe. You need to find a tribe, people who speak your language, people who are going to be there for you no matter what, because you're going to need people. It's going to be tough, so you're going to need people who are going to remind you what needs to be done at certain points, because you, you can't keep up with everything. And lastly, wherever you are from, your dreams, your aspirations, everything that you think of in, it, in your little tiny corner are valued. Her place was not to co-parent an adult whose parents could not teach uh, basic life mannerisms on how to coexist. This one they gave to her and they called him husband. Her place was not to seduce, to arouse 
or satisfy the sexual appetite of another human, to stay on standby and answer morning glory calls and be blamed for the actions or reactions of a penis. Her place was not in the fellowship of women who taught her traditional scripture, home management systems, which did not exist in universities because they were just common myths and beliefs. Her place was not of a statue in a museum, for sure, because everything that existed inside and outside of her were interconnected parts, and right in there, they lived a heart. You ask about her place? Her place is on a pedestal. She belongs to the top, and she is queen, so when you ask about her place, her place is on top.